If part of your option trading strategy involves selling call options in some form or another, so that could be selling naked call options, it could be selling calls as part of a short strangle strategy, or it could even involve buying or selling call vertical spreads. In any of these cases, you must understand what call dividend risk is. And that's what we're going to talk about in great detail in this video. Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with a brand new video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And as I said in this video, we're going to talk about call dividend risk, which is basically the risk that your short call options could get assigned early prior to the expiration date and also that you would be liable to pay the dividend to the option buyer. Now, why would this happen? Well, it would happen if, among a few conditions that we'll talk about in this video, but basically if the call option buyer wanted to receive that dividend. And the only way to receive a dividend is to actually own the shares beforehand. So therefore, the option buyer must exercise the call early to then receive the shares from you as the call option seller. And then at that point, the buyer is now eligible to receive that dividend, which also must be paid by you, the option seller. Now, as I kind of mentioned, there are a few conditions that must be met to actually make it worth it for the option buyer to exercise the call early and receive that dividend. This situation is not always going to play out, but in short, this is one of the risks that comes with selling call options. You are also at risk of potentially paying a dividend as well. Now, before we can dive into all the details here, you must understand two major concepts. The first of which is the X dividend date. And in short, the X dividend date is simply the date at which if you were to buy shares on that day or afterward, you would not be eligible to receive the dividend. So of course that means anytime up to the X dividend date, you could either buy shares or exercise call options to receive shares and then also be eligible to receive the dividend at some point in the near future. So ultimately, if you are short call options and you know there's also a dividend payout coming soon, then check to see when the X dividend date is. It's very easy to look that up because it will be any time prior to that X dividend date where you could get assigned early on your short calls. And then secondly, the other concept you must understand is extrinsic value. Now I do have a separate video that takes a deep dive into intrinsic value and extrinsic value in regards to option contracts. I'll post a card above linking to it so you can watch it. But simply put, extrinsic value is simply the extra time value that is baked into the prices of options. And I'll show you some examples in this video so you understand exactly what that means. But basically, there is value in time. So the time remaining between now and the expiration date has value in it because anything can happen between now and then. Your options could go super far in the money or super far out of the money. And based on that, you could have huge profits, huge losses. So there is value in that time to see what actually happens with your option contracts. And as you'll see in this video, in order for an option buyer to exercise the option early, they must forfeit that additional time value. They're actually going to lose a bit of money by exercising early, but if the dividend they receive pays more than what they lose, then it's obviously worth doing this. And again, if this is a bit confusing, don't worry because I'm gonna show you some detailed examples in this video so that by the end, you know exactly how this stuff works. And finally, before we jump over to my computer, I want to make a quick announcement for any of you who are brand new to the channel. And that is you can also find me on Skillshare, where you can take my very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing. And I provided some links to some of the introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. So be sure to check them out. And when you sign up for Skillshare using any of those links, you'll get a two-week free trial. And so with all that being said, now we can fully dive in. Okay, so first off here, I wanted to briefly show you Apple's dividend history. So if you look at the first row in this table down here, you can see their most recent dividend payout date was on May 13th, 2021. This was the actual day on which Apple paid out their most recent dividend. But also you can see there is a record date. There's also a declaration date and then the X dividend date, which I've already mentioned. And this is the really important one. And so take note that the X dividend date is always going to happen a few days prior to the actual payment date. And again, this is the cutoff point. If you bought shares of Apple either on this day, on May 7th, or after that, you would not be eligible to receive this dividend on May 13th. So that also means for the person who bought your call option, they must exercise that call prior to the X dividend date. Now, in case you're wondering what these other two dates are, the declaration date is simply the day on which Apple announces that they're going to pay another dividend. 
So this is always the first thing that happens, which you can see occurred on April 28th, 2021. And once Apple makes this declaration, the next thing that happens is the ex-dividend date, the cutoff point. And then after the cutoff point comes the record date, which was on May 10th. And this is simply the day where Apple records everybody who is an official shareholder of the company. So anybody who ends up on the list as an official shareholder of Apple stock, they are then eligible to receive the dividend payout on May 13th in this case. So that's the full picture there. But again, the really important date is the ex-dividend. Now let's come over here to Thinkorswim. And as you can see here, I've already pulled up a one-year price action chart of Apple. So for a clear example, let's go to the trade tab and we'll take a look at the August expiration cycle. And so let's say a few weeks ago, you sold the 130 strike call option because at the time, let's say Apple was at 120 bucks per share. So for whatever reason, you are bearish on Apple at that price point, you sold this 130 strike call option. But now fast forward to today, and you're obviously very wrong on this position because now Apple is at $148.56 per share, well above your call strike. Now let's also assume that Apple is going to pay a dividend very soon and the ex-dividend date is next week. So now the question is, are you at risk of being assigned early on this call option and also paying that dividend? Or in other words, is it worth it for the option buyer to exercise this call option and forfeit the extrinsic value, which I'll walk you through in a minute here, so they can receive the shares and also the dividend from you? So we'll pull out the calculator here. Now the first step is to actually figure out the intrinsic value in this option contract, which is simply how much this option would be worth if the expiration date was today. So pretending for a moment that today actually was the expiration day, the call option buyer for this 130 strike call option would then have the right to purchase 100 shares of stock at a price of 130, and then they could turn around and sell those shares back into the market at the market price of 148.56. So again, they first buy those shares at a price of 130 bucks per share. That's going to cost money. And then the option buyer can sell those shares at 148.56 and make a profit of $18.56 per share times the 100 shares that all these contracts are tied to. And the overall profit on just the stock is 1,856 bucks. Now this would not be the full profit for the option buyer because again, keep in mind, they had to pay money initially to buy the contract in the first place. So perhaps maybe they paid 500 bucks to buy the call a while ago, but the point is this is the intrinsic value of this 130 strike call option. This is how much this call option would be worth if today was the expiration day. Now, of course, in reality, today is not the expiration day. It's still 26 days in the future. So that means this contract still has some additional time value baked in. And that's why the actual price of this call option is greater than the intrinsic value, right? Looking at the bid and ask spread for this 130 strike call option, the fair price for this option contract is around 1890, a little bit more than 1856. So finally, to figure out the extrinsic value in this contract, how much additional time value is left, we simply take the price of the contract and subtract from it the intrinsic value. So 1890 minus 1856 is $34. There is $34 of extrinsic value still baked into this contract. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if the option buyer were to exercise this call option early before the expiration date, they are going to forfeit this $34. They're going to lose this money because think about it. Let's say that person initially bought that call option from you for $500. And so right now the option buyer has two choices. They could simply sell the contract and book their profits and not deal with the stock, not deal with dividends at all, just sell the contract for the current market price of the contract, which is 1890. So we add to this 1890. And in this scenario, the profit for the option buyer would be $1,390. Not bad. Now let's say, and we'll reset here. So again, the buyer initially bought this contract for 500 bucks. Now let's say instead of just selling the contract and booking the profits, the buyer now wants to exercise the option early to get the shares from you and then get the dividend at some point in the near future. Now, as I just showed you, the profits from the stock, if you were to exercise this call option early, would be $1,856. So that leaves a net profit of $1,356 which you can now see is $34 less 
than the profit would be if the buyer just sold the contract. Again, if the buyer just sold the contract, they would actually make a profit of $13.90. But by choosing to instead exercise the contract early, you can clearly see here that the buyer does indeed forfeit that $34 of extrinsic value. They lose that additional bit of profit. So what this means is this is only worth doing if the dividend they eventually receive pays more than the $34 they lose by exercising the contract early. So if we assume that Apple pays a dividend of 50 cents per share times 100 shares, that's 50 bucks in total, then eventually once the option buyer receives that dividend, we tack onto this that extra profit of 50 bucks, which brings the final total profit to 1406, which is greater than the 1390 the option buyer would receive if they just sold the contract and never dealt with the shares or the dividend at all. So in summary here, it only makes sense for the option buyer to exercise the call early if the dividend they would receive pays more than the extrinsic value they would lose by exercising early. Now, if we come back to the Apple dividend history, you can see that Apple right now is really only paying a dividend of about 22 cents per share. So times 100 shares, that's a total payout of 22 bucks. And 22 is obviously less than 34, the extrinsic value left in the contract. So if this was a real life scenario and Apple for their next dividend was only going to pay out 22 cents per share, then you as the seller of this contract would very likely not get assigned on this contract. There is no advantage for the option buyer to exercise early, so they will not. So definitely keep this all in mind when you are selling call options in some form or another, naked call options, credit spreads, debit spreads, whatever. If you are selling calls in some form or another, definitely keep this in mind. However, I will say this really only becomes an issue if your call option, your short call option, is very far in the money. Otherwise, it's very likely that your call option is still going to have a lot more extrinsic value than what the dividend will pay. So with that being said, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know your thoughts or if you got questions in the comment section below. And don't forget, if you want to take some very in-depth classes on options trading and stock market investing, then check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I drop new videos every single week and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.